An interesting announcement from Hemogenics uh, this week. Uh, Vladislav Sander joins us now to talk about it. Uh, good to see you today. Thank you for inviting me. Good to see you too. No, it's a pleasure. So tell us about the um, the company's um, progress with its leukemia treatment. That's what uh, the release was about. Um, give us a bit more of a flavor of what's been happening. Right. Uh, as our investors know, uh, we are developing um, a new treatment for relapsed and refractory acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, this treatment is CAR-T. Uh, it's called HGCT1. Uh, over the last year, less than a year, we uh, treated uh, three patients uh, with the first lowest dose of uh, our CAR-T. And um, we submitted uh, the results of this treatment, uh, mainly safety, uh, to the independent safety board for review. And uh, the goal for this was uh, to get their permission, their green light, to go to the next dose of the treatment of the patients. And I'm talking about adult patients right now. Yeah, and so you've, so you've got the green light. So what happens now then? So now, uh, because we got green light uh, to go to the next dose, uh, we... Uh, formally allowed to start recruitment uh, of the next cohort of adult patients. This recruitment will be slightly delayed because we are transferring our uh, manufacturing to our partner Made Scientific. Uh, we are going through the um, tech transfer and we're teaching them how to manufacture our specific CAR T uh, because there are certain uh, trade secrets that we do not revealed to the outer world to make it more potent and more stable. Uh, and after it's, after this process is completed, uh, we can start recruiting new patients and treating new adult patients. At the same time, um, we announced a few weeks ago that we got permission to open the second arm of our trial. And we the second arm is designed to uh, test our CAR-T for the treatment of uh, acute myeloid leukemia in, uh, in pediatric patients, basically in kids between 12 and 18 years old. So when the tech transfer to, for, for the manufacturing of the CAR-T uh, is complete, uh, we will start also recruiting um, kids uh, to be treated uh, with the lowest dose of, um, of our CAR-T. So how big will these uh, cohorts of patients be in terms of both the children and the adults? Right. So each cohort is three patients, provided that there are no dose limiting toxicities. And there are, and there are only uh, three levels, uh, there, are, there are only three doses of CAR-T that we're going to use to treat these patients. If we encounter uh, dose limiting toxicities, then uh, we will need to treat more patients or we will need to uh, reduce the dose uh, that we use for the treatment of these patients. Uh, in, in either case, uh, both for adults and pediatrics, uh, we will have up to 18 patients to figure out what's the optimal and safest dose uh, of our CAR-T for the treatment of this indication. So, so far so good then. How long will the next um, phase last for? Well, we do not know yet. Uh, hopefully, uh, if everything goes all right, uh, we will be able to treat one patient, one adult patient, and one pediatric patient per month, meaning that uh, we potentially can treat two, uh, two patients a month, one adult and one pediatric. But obviously, we do not know if there are going to be uh, toxicities at a higher dose in adults and how the kids are going to be responding to the treatment. Uh, that's why we're doing the clinical trial. Yeah, so there's lots uh, that's still to be learned by you guys, but um, what does the longer term outlook uh, look like? Uh, what, what, how, will the, um, how will the treatments end up uh, progressing you know, into, into, the year, into the coming years? So provided that we demonstrate that it's safe, the lowest dose is safe. We know this, and it, it's uh, independently verified and confirmed by 
the committee. Um, so provided it's safe, uh, we will uh, obviously uh, go after efficacy. We already have signs, good signs of efficacy, um, but ultimately we will have to go to phase two clinical trials uh, to demonstrate that um, this treatment really helps uh, patients, is, you know, has good efficacy. And then um, the sky is the limit. I mean, we are obviously talking to uh, large, uh, large pharmaceutical companies that potentially may either acquire or in license uh, this treatment. Right. So there's a clear sort of end game and a, and a way forward for you guys. Yes. We are also looking at uh, exemption um, uh, pathway in Europe, namely in Estonia. Uh, it remains to be seen how, how fast uh, we can go there. But ultimately, if we get to the point uh, where we start treating patients uh, in a hospital under the exemption protocol, we may start getting um, revenue um, pretty soon. And also, we will get additional data from additional patients outside of our clinical trials. So that will be interesting then. Now, you mentioned revenue. Uh, that brings me on to another aspect. Um, tell us a little bit about the financial position of the company, how it's, um, how it's set up in that regard. Well, we made an enormous effort to reduce our burn rate, which we did. Uh, we raised uh, approximately 2.2 million um, last month. And uh, obviously, so now we are stable, uh, we have a longer uh, run, but obviously we will need more money. And we are working on uh, getting this new money uh, in the least dilutive fashion we possibly can. Yes, and a presumably successful results will be helpful uh, in that regard. Absolutely. And uh, I think the successful results are already uh, reflected in our share price. We basically went up four, four or five times over the last two months. Yes, it's quite a good looking graph, actually. It's sort of going along quite nice and stable. And all of a sudden, there's a fairly large spike towards the end of September or sometime in September. And it, it looks very attractive. Right. I hope I hope. Um, I hope that the investors, the market, uh, will realize uh, and does realize that uh, we are for real and we have well, a good future. Well, it seems like there's a lot to be optimistic about at the, uh, at the current juncture. Um, would, would, you, would you say that's a fair statement? I think it is. I agree. Great. Well, we look forward to watching you make further progress. Um, but for now, thanks very much for joining us and talking uh, through us that today. Thank you so much.